The day Gabriel Iglesias became fluffy made him one of today's most popular comedians. He has built a multi-million dollar brand around the name, and in just two days, he sold over 90,000 tickets, becoming the first comic to headline Dodger Stadium, recording it all as a Netflix special accurately titled Stadium Fluffy. However, all his success did not come without a lot of sacrifice. And I can honestly say I've sacrificed everything. The night my mom passed away, I was on a stage. That for me is my biggest regret. But for millions of his fans, his regret is a gift. You are an inspiration to all the Latino nations. Thank you for doing this. Gabriel's journey to Fluffy started at the age of 10. After watching Eddie Murphy's Raw while his mom was away at Bingo, he decided to test his comedy at a school talent show. 10 year old, I'm doing impressions of Yogi Bear, Ronald Reagan, Pee Wee Herman. I mean, that's, you know, who was at the time. And they were laughing and they're like, oh, this is great, you're on. Although Gabriel was also on his high school speech team, he didn't get back on the comedy stage for another 10 years at the age of 20. The first time I went on stage as a stand-up comic, not as a child going up in front of uh, you know other kids, was uh, April 10th of 1997. I know the date exactly because that was when everything just changed. Yeah, I gotta turn on the AC, like you walk out here and <laughs> <laughs> I basically wound up doing the bits that I did in school as a kid. But before he could find his comedic voice as Fluffy, Gabriel had to take a big leap of faith. He quit his stable job making five grand a month selling cell phones to pursue the glamorous career of full-time comedy. Next thing I know, I'm sleeping on my brother's balcony for about three months, and then my sister took me in. She goes, what are you doing sleeping on a balcony? I go, that's where he has me sleeping. She goes, well, come and stay at my house. And so my sister took me in and I rode her couch for about a year. Wow. Next thing I know, I started making enough money to where we were able to share an apartment. And how he made that money was a lot less glamorous than hustling cell phones. I knew a contractor and I called him up and I said, hey, do you have anything I could do for cash? And he goes, well, all I got are guys that are digging ditches. If, you know, if, you're, if you're not too good to dig a ditch, I'm like, I'll go dig a ditch. And so I did that just to get cash. Gabriel's sacrifices were also made on stage, performing anywhere he could doing shows in garages and, and next to swimming pools, performing outside of a, <laughs> and patios and just yeah. wherever I could do shows because in the beginning I wasn't allowed to perform in comedy clubs. You had to be t over 21. Imagine a bar like this, everybody's having a good time watching the Laker game. Oh no. Okay? Right. And it's the fourth quarter and all of a sudden, boom, they kill all the TVs and all right, now we're gonna have comedy. Ooh. You got, you got a bunch of thugs in there wearing freaking Laker jerseys yeah. and you just shut off the game and now you're gonna try to do stand-up comedy. And it wasn't my idea to do that, but I'm like, right. I'm just here. Yeah, and yeah. And that always throw me to the wolves. Oh man, and so you so you debuted in the toughest right of from circumstances. The and boom, I went up there. And, what was know, your opener? An overweight Latino with energy, give it up. And everybody's like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Even the cholos are like, hey, Mato's cute. I've been a comedian over 10 years and have performed in strip clubs, public buses, sidewalks. These are the gigs all comics do. And Gabriel worked every night to build the career he has today climbing the showbiz ladder from small parts in TV shows and movies Wakanda forever to now starring in them. And this is what I've always been doing, is just doing stuff that's uh, open to everybody, family friendly. And you can share it with your family. And... Absolutely. Today, we see the superstar Fluffy. But it all started with this one defining day that transformed him from Gabriel Iglesias to Fluffy. Just like Gabriel sacrificed a lot to get where he is, so did his mother. She was a single mom with six children. Gabriel, the youngest, was also a mama's boy, which paid off big because his mom is the reason he has the name Fluffy. Ironically, Gabriel initially hated the name Fluffy. When did I become Fluffy? I became Fluffy when my mom gave me that nickname. This was probably 12 years ago, where I, I, I would call myself fat. And she goes, no, you're not fat, you're Fluffy. And so that stuck, and instead of getting mad about it, because uh, in the beginning when I'd say that joke, I'd say I'm not fat and fluffy on stage and stuff, at the end of the show, nobody would say, oh, you're funny, Gabriel. They'd say, oh, you're funny, Fluffy. And I'm like, uh, Iglesias, half the name's already famous. <laughs> you know, come on, just, just say Gabriel, like, Fluffy. And I'm like, you know, or whatever. But as the saying goes, time and money heal all wounds. I hated it. I hated the fact that people were calling me Fluffy, not calling me Gabriel. He has taken the name Fluffy and turned it into a multi-million dollar business with movies, specials, merchandise, and even a website branded as FluffyGuy.com. And now, like if you Google it, it's the first thing that comes it's up. It's the shit. It pops up before bunnies, Fluffy's quilts, the shit, man. comforters. 
And this fluffy money is all fun, but there's something much more meaningful that makes Gabriel one of the biggest comics on the planet. He has always made a point to create family-friendly comedy. The best advice I was ever given was uh, perform clean, cut out the cur curse words, and uh, when opportunity comes knocking, because it will, you'll be ready and you won't have to edit your show. Fun fact, Gabriel hasn't always been a clean comedian. Check out this clip. When I first started, I was really blue really really blue and um i was basically doing cartoons having sex and so I'm, oh yeah i mean it was hysterical but you can't do it on the tonight show so i'm up there doing freaking marvin the martian having sex and i'm like oh my oh my modulator oh. <laughs> you know see it's still funny but you can't do that shit on late night it's a good thing gabriel took the clean route though because his fans of all ages now recite his jokes like karaoke and his family friendly comedy goes beyond just jokes. The reason I started wearing Hawaiian shirts on stage and want to have a certain brand and be consistent, I chose a nice loud Hawaiian shirt because it was friendly. I, I didn't come across threatening. You know, there's a lot of artists that want to wear black or they want to just look cool. And I just wanted to make sure that, that everyone knew that I was there to have fun and you know, nothing says fun like a Hawaiian shirt. You're just there to have a good time. What truly makes Gabriel different from any other comedian is his relationship with his fans. When people come up and ask for an autograph or they want to take a picture, it's still special. No matter what, it's always going to be special because that's somebody that thinks that highly of you. That's why I feel like now with social media and the internet and the amount of people that are watching what I'm doing, especially this Dodger Stadium thing, What's to say that people don't get inspired to want to do something because of that? And that's when you realize that you're doing something bigger than, than what you planned for. Fresh off his sold out stadium show, Fluffy has hinted at retirement. I thought about retiring right after Dodger Stadium because I says, you know what? I don't know if I'll ever be able to do anything as amazing as this in one night. Whatever moment happens next in Gabriel's career, that day his mom nicknamed him Fluffy will never retire. And I'm also a comedian that doesn't want to retire. So subscribe before my wife makes me get a real job.